In a previous video, my colleague Ken Collins introduced us to the new ODBC query interface in the Cogent Data Hub. He also showed us the new filtered point data table control within Data Hub WebView. I'm going to follow on from that video, and in this short video, I'm going to answer a question that several of our users have been asking, which is, how do I read process data from a database and display that data in a table format within WebView. So, in order to answer this question, let me show you what I've done to set up some simulation data. I'm running the Data Hub, or rather the Data PID program, which is generating some PID control data and sending it to the Data Hub. And within the Data Hub, I've configured a data logging action. Let me show you that. This configured action is firing every five seconds and it's writing the value of data PID, PID1.pv into the process data table of the MySQL underscore cogent database. If we take a closer look at the settings, you can see that when this configured action triggers, we are adding a new row and each of the rows has a first column which is uh, labeled point ID and this is a key field it's a an incrementing integer number the second column is the point name and we're just taking the name property from the data point third column is the point value and the fourth column is the point time or the timestamp on the data change and we are triggering that every five seconds. So that's basically simulating some other process within your plant writing uh, process data into a database table. Now what we want to do is we want to configure the data hub to query our database and read that data back into a format that we can display within WebView. So I'm going to use the new query interface within the Data Hub. Within this interface, I've already configured a DSN for my database, so I can simply select it from the list and click on Connect. And if I come to the second tab, I can in here define the query that I want to send to the database. I'll give it a label. I'll just call it My Query. And in this field here is where I define the SQL query statement I want to uh, want to send. To save time, I'll just paste in my query statement. You can see that it simply says select all or select star from the process data table and order them based on the point ID. Uh, that's our incrementing uh, integer uh, reference key field. So order them by point ID in descending order and limit the result set to the first row in the list that you get. Now, because this is in descending order, the first row will actually be the last row in the table, um, so be the last data item to be added to the table. If I click on submit, this will test our statement and you see that because we can now query, we're getting a list back of the different column names within this table. This indicates that our query is correct. Now what I want to do, the results of this query, I'm going to save them as a whole data set in a specific point and I'm going to create a point within a new domain and I'm going to call this process data one. Now if I click on create, I can then go and define my trigger. I want to have this also fire every five seconds. So I'll click on modify and you can see here's our query statement. And if I click apply and then we come back to the data hub. If I click on show diagnostics in the script log, apply that and then click on the script log, you can see here is the um, action that was 
or the uh, query statement sent to the database and you can see it executing every five seconds we're making a query and the results of that query if we take a look at the data are being <coughs> updated in this process data one point you see here's the long string of data that's being returned from that query statement and if we look at the timestamp you can see that every five seconds it's being incremented. Now before we move over to WebView I'm just going to go to the WebView properties and refresh this list of domains and tell WebView that we want to read data from the new test domain that I just created. So we click on apply. Now we can go ahead and launch WebView And I'll log in as admin. And now to display the results of our query, I'm going to use the new filtered data table. And if I move this up to the top of the screen, all I have to do is associate this with a point binding to the new process data point one uh, point that we created. You see as soon as I associate it you see that this table is displaying the results of that query and every five seconds when the query <coughs> reads a new value from the database this um, the point in the data hub is being updated and this control is interpreting that long string of information and it's passing that out into a data table where we've got the point ID, that's our incrementing integer, our name, value and timestamp. Now let me show you something interesting here. If I go back to our query, I'll just move it down a little bit. We can now edit the query. Let's say that rather than just bring back the, f the most recent value I can actually tell it that I want to bring back the last five values. So if I modify that and then click apply, watch what happens the next time the query is executed. Instead of just returning one row, we're now getting the last five rows. So what's happened is our query is executed and returned five rows of data. This has been updated um, so that whole data set is uh, being updated in the process one data point because our control is attached to the process one data point we're now getting a larger data set being returned and this uh, control within WebView is passing the data out and giving us five rows of data and every five seconds you'll actually see this incrementing this will move down one as our new um, new row of data is added to the table. Now this basically shows us then how we can query a database, get a result back and display the result within a data table. One of the other things we can do is we can take the point value, let's say that this is some information that we wanted to represent in a trend chart or a, uh, a label on the screen within WebView we can do that if we come back to our query I'm just going to click on it and click create to duplicate the query and then what I'm going to do is rather than store the whole um, result of the query into a data point here I'm going to say that I want to create a single data point and rather than five rows let's change this to one I just want the, a single row to be returned and I want to create a new point and the point name is going to be the point name that I read back from the um, SQL table. The point value is obviously going to be the point value. Timestamp is going to be timestamp. We don't have a quality but that doesn't matter. And this point, the new point that I'm creating, I want it to be stored also in my test domain. 
So if, not, if I now press modify, I've changed uh, this uh, new configured action. Both of them are going to fire every five seconds. If I apply that change, and then if we come back, just take a look in the data hub, you'll see that under our test domain now, we have our original process one data one point, which is um, the result of our first query. And we also now have a single, or we have a, a data point within test that contains a single point value that is also updating every five seconds. You'll see it changing there. But this single point value we can now use, if we go back to web view, I can now put, let's say, a trend chart on the page. And I can bind pen1 to a data point. Let's say in my test domain, I want to pick the PID1 PV value. And then every five seconds, as that query executes and we get a new value stored in the data hub for test1 um, colon PID1.PV, our trend chart will pick up the data change and we'll plot that. So you see what we've done is we've configured two actions within the data hub, the reading from the same database. One of them is creating a single point with a value that's changing that we're mapping to a trend. The other one's creating a data set that we're displaying within the new filtered point table within WebView. So this shows you how we can get process data out of a database and display it within Data Hub WebView. If you have any questions about any of this, please contact us. We're happy to talk you through it. Thanks very much.